I'm Cheryl. Welcome to Celtic Roots Farm. Today I'm going to be making a roasted chicken with one of our chickens that we uh, raised and butchered this summer. And it's a really simple recipe. Uh, we like to keep things as clean and as simple as possible. Um, we're just going to be using some celery, carrots, onions, some water, and some butter for the roasting of the chicken. Um, and I like to use my cast iron pan. It really works well to keep the moisture in when you're first cooking it. It takes about an hour to an hour and a half. I usually cook it for about an hour with the lid on, and then I cook it for another half an hour with the lid off, just to get that nice golden crisp on the skin. So let's get started. I'm gonna start cutting up some of these vegetables and putting them in the pot. So whenever possible, if we haven't grown our own vegetables, we like to purchase organic especially vegetables that are root vegetables or what they refer to as the dirty dozen because those are the vegetables that um, come into contact more frequently with pesticides and we've learned that the pest pesticides are not good for us. So I'm going to get started with the carrots. I have a bunch of carrots here. I'm not putting them all in the pot because after we're done eating this meal I'm going to be taking uh, the leftover carcass and I'm going to be making bone broth but I'm going to prep all of my vegetables for tonight's dinner and for the bone broth. So I'm just gonna cut these up into bite-sized pieces um, after I um, take some of the skin off. While these were organic, um, they still have the skin and I like to take it off, just it, it seems to give a, a smoother taste to the carrots. I also have my trusty bucket here for my scraps that we'll give to the chickens. And again, like I said, this is not, we're not using all these carrots for this particular dish. We're going to have some to roast with and then some for my bone broth. And I make bone broth about once a week. Um, I drink it just about every day, about a half a cup. So I like to make a half gallon of bone broth whenever I possibly can. And because we processed our own chickens um, this year, I did save the necks and the feet, which I'll throw into our um, Instant Pot when I make my broth. And if anybody's wondering what this ring is, that's me putting a very hot lid on my butcher block. So don't do that because it leaves a nice mark. going to put about half of the carrots in there. So um, the celery, the same thing. I'm going to just cut it up in bite-sized pieces, but I'm not going to throw any of the celery away like I did with the skins for the, the carrots. I'm going to save everything that I wouldn't put necessarily in with the chicken tonight uh, for the broth that I'm going to make. I like to put the vegetables on the bottom so that the chicken has something to sit on. Um, sometimes, you know, depending on what kind of stove you have or the heat of your stove, it, you know, your chicken might stick to the bottom and it could burn. Um, but I like to just have a little bed of veggies and I'll put a little bit of water in the bottom of it too, about a cup, just to kind of facilitate that steaming process and help the juices start flowing. That's good for that. All right, and I'm gonna cut up one onion for dinner tonight with this. And this is really, the carrots and the celery, um, after being in the pot for a little while will get really soft. Um, so some people don't like to eat them like that. We're, we, we're, we like to eat them like that. But, um, but you can add them later if you wanted to, just to add a little flavor to the, uh, to the uh, gravy at the end. And again, I'm gonna save the skins from this process and put it in with the bone broth because that has a lot of good flavoring in it. You might, you know, you, nece you don't necessarily want to eat it in your meals. 
but it adds a lot of uh, good flavor to, to stocks. I'm trying not to cry. These are just a plain, uh, regular yellow. We grew yellow, red, and white onions this year. Okay, so that's it for the vegetables. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper. And uh, I like to use Himalayan salt. It's uh, one of the better salts to, um, to use. It's got your trace minerals in it. Your iodine table salt does not. So I try to stay away from that. I'm gonna add about a half of a tablespoon. We, we use a bit of salt in our meals. I know a lot of people shy away from that if you have like cardiac issues. Um, they usually tell you to, to limit your salt, but, and then I like to use cracked pepper. I'm going to add about a cup of water. All right, now I'm going to get ready and prepare the chicken. So I have my instant pot for later. So I'm just going to grab the scraps that I just cut up and the extra carrots and celery and onion and put it in here. salt and pepper again. And I'm going to set this aside until after dinner. So this is one of our um, pasture raised chickens that we grew this year and processed here on our farm. And this is about 3.1 pounds. So um, this is big enough for Jay and I. Um, it's just us here now. Our boys are grown and out of the house, which is kind of really weird to say. But this will get us probably a minimum of two meals, probably three meals, um, and then also uh, the bone broth. So I'm just gonna get it out of the package. I'm gonna put it on, uh, put it in the pot, and I'm gonna get it in the oven. I have the oven preheated to 375. And then I'm going to set the timer for 30 minutes. And I'm going to add the juice that has come out for more flavor. And so now I'm going to take some butter. And this is probably, you know, this is not necessary but again it adds more flavor and i try to smear it as best i can on the bird it doesn't always stay because the bird is damp so i try to smear it and get it to stay on here if i can um, i guess if you melted it and poured it on there when it gets hot it's just going to melt down into the broth at the bottom here and i like to use a couple of tablespoons i find that that's plenty i'll stick a little bit on the inside and then back in here my assistant. <laughs> I'm going to add a little more salt on the top. And that helps to just draw some of the moisture out of the bird when it's cooking, so it'll help to crisp up the, the skin. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to put this in the oven at 375. Okay, one hour later, we'll take uh, the lid off. All right, it's been an hour. I'll get you. I'll check and see if there's enough fluid in there. I don't need to add any more. And now we'll cook it for another half an hour with the lid off. All right, another half an hour. All right, it's been in for half an hour without the lid on, so it should be nice and brown. Take that out, let that sit there for a minute, and turn this off. So 
And now I'm just gonna take the chicken out of the pan and put it on a serving dish. Just let it drain some of the juices out. Just gonna let that sit. We'll cut that up after a little while. I'm just gonna take the veggies out of here and all of the juice and the broth. I'm gonna make a gravy from. All right, that's good enough. Some people will strain this, but we're not that picky. I'm just gonna make the roux with the little bits of things that are in there. It just adds more flavor. So you can thicken this a couple of different ways. You can just use a little cornstarch with water. They call that a slurry. Um, we like to use a roux because it adds more flavor again, some butter. Um, it's equal parts butter to flour when you're making a roux. So I'm just gonna get this butter melted here. I have three tablespoons of uh, flour in here. So I'm gonna put in about three tablespoons. I just kind of eyeball three tablespoons um, and let that melt. And then I will add the flour and I just let it cook for just about 30 seconds just to kind of get the, um, the rawness out of the flour. So I'm going to turn the flame down, I'm splattering a little bit here, and I'm going to add the flour now. Like I said, this is not going to take long, about 30 seconds, to cook this together. This is salted butter, so I'm not going to add any more salt to this, but I am going to add some cracked pepper. Alright, so I'm going to move this onto the heat, and I'm going to grab my whisk. And when you pour this in, you want to whisk it at all times because you don't want clumps in, unless you like clumpy gravy. You may not need to use all the roux. It really depends on how much liquid you have in here. I did put a cup which, and then some juices from the chicken, so... I probably will use the majority of this roux to get it uh, thick, to make a nice thick gravy. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit on this, and just let that cook until it's thick. So this is starting to thicken up. I'll just give it another minute to cook and we should be all set. So while this is continuing to thicken, I have some faux mashed potatoes um, on the stove here, just basically uh, cauliflower mashed with some um, cream and butter, and I'm gonna add some cheese to it now. Okay, this is done. So I'm just gonna turn the heat off. And then we will cut up the chicken and put it on a plate. And that's dinner for tonight.